Hi, I'm Dana Woodson and welcome to At Your Service. Joining me on today's program will be the city's health director and the city's mosquito control administrator to talk about this summer's mosquito season. We'll discuss how the city's mosquito control efforts plus the preventive measures that residents and property owners take around their yards will help to equal less pesky mosquitoes and their associated health risk. So stay tuned. So, same time next week? Well, of course. Put away a few bucks, feel like a million bucks. For free tips to help you save, go to Feed the Pig. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Quiet, please. Wait a sec. I'll take one. Oh, yeah. All right. All good. Take care. Way to go. Nice. Bring it on. Gotcha. I'm here for you. Oh, no. Please, please, please. I'm waiting. Interesting. Not buying it. Not fair. That's it. This conversation is over. Oh, brother. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. I'm having a stroke. I'm having a stroke. Know the sudden signs. Learn fast. F. Face drooping. A. Arm weakness. S. Speech difficulty. T. Time. Time to call 911 immediately. The sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Learn the body language, the sudden signs, and spot a stroke fast. Welcome back to At Your Service. At this time, Dr. David Chang, the Portsmouth Health Department Health Director, and Mr. George Wojcik, the city's mosquito control administrator join us. Welcome to the program, gentlemen. Thank you. Tell us about the city's mosquito control program. Well, our mosquito control program is in full swing. Uh, a lot of people thought we were gonna have a short season because we had such a bad winter, but uh, we actually started treating for mosquito larvae in March this year, which is pretty much normal. Um, our mosquito counts and everything have been tracking pretty much as normal since about mid-May, so we're doing everything we normally do, setting our traps each week, processing them. We're uh, larva siding during the day, and then we have crews that are actually out spraying with the trucks, truck bogging at night. Okay. Talk to us about the different processes that you use. The first thing we have to do is we have to know what kind of mosquitoes we have and where are they. That's our surveillance part. That can be going out and actually using a little cup on a handle and dipping water and we're checking to see if we actually see mosquito larvae. We can bring them back and identify them so we know what we have. Um, the other part of that is we trap for adult mosquitoes. And the traps that we're doing is we're just out measuring the mosquito populations. Everybody has their own opinion about how bad the mosquito season is or how bad they are at a particular area. Well, we put the traps out so we can actually measure. The trap doesn't have any bias. We know if we put the same trap out in different locations, a trap that has 500 mosquitoes is a lot worse than a trap that only has 50 mosquitoes in it. So we do that to identify areas that we're having problems, number one, and number two, what kind of mosquitoes are in there. So then we can direct the larva siding efforts to the kinds of habitats that the mosquitoes come from. So there's a different type of treatment for the different species of mosquitoes. We have something um, early in the springtime, we have a, a woodland species 
Um, we need to target areas in the woods. Um, pretty much they only come out once, once a year, early in the springtime. This time of year, it can rain and the woods will flood up and they won't be in there. So we don't have to spend any time going back and retreating those areas. Um, containers, again, those are always a problem for us. There'll always be a problem. You know, nobody remembers the containers. You know, the flower pots, the clogged up rain gutters, the tarps, the five gallon buckets, the kid toys, all those things that people have in their backyards. You know, we get a little bit of rain, they hold just a little bit of water for a few days and you got mosquitoes. Well, we've talked about the city's role in mosquito control. Let's talk more about the role of the resident. Um, the residents need to do their part. Um, there's no doubt about it. You know, the city can't go on everybody's property and dump out the containers. Um, you know, homeowners, residents need to take their steps and if they dump out the containers on their property, they won't have any mosquitoes. The mosquitoes have to have water in order to survive, okay? If you take the water away, they can't survive, okay? And, you know, the last couple of years we talked about helping out your neighbors. You know, I do it at my house, I do it with all my neighbors, you know, I got some elderly neighbors, they can't get out, can't remember. Well, I go out and I dump out the bird baths for them, I dump out the toys, I dump out, you know, clean out their gutters and stuff, um, just to help out. It helps them out, but it also helps me out. So mosquitoes that may be breeding on their property don't come over to my property. So that's something that we've worked out so all of us can benefit, basically. Exactly. Well, Dr. Chang, what would you like to add about citizens helping to protect themselves? important thing is to prevent mosquito habitats from forming. So I agree with George that um, the most important thing is that we uh, get the message out that folks um, try to eliminate those, the areas of standing water around their household. Because most of the mosquitoes that will bite you will be the ones that are immediately surrounding your, your home. And so that's one way that you can directly uh, um, decrease the mosquito population around where you live. Well, when we talk about mosquito control, we can use three Ds, drain, dress, and defend. Let's talk about those. Okay. Well, the drain is a simple one. Again, if you take away the water, the mosquitoes don't have any way to reproduce. You get rid of the little ones, you don't have adult mosquitoes. Um, dress is the next one, which can be a little bit tricky when it's warm out there. Um, you know, long sleeve shirts, long pants. You know, if you cover up, you keep the mosquitoes from biting you, okay? Um, now I know in the summertime it's 90 degrees, it can be hot, nobody wants to wear long sleeves, long pants. That comes in with your insect repellent. Any exposed skin that you have, you want to use the insect repellent um, properly as it says on the label and that will prevent the mosquitoes from actually biting you. Now let's talk more about the approved mosquito repellents. There's a lot of different insect repellents out there on the market. Um, the Centers for Disease Control recommends anything that contains the or compound called DEET, D-E-E-T. Um, it's been around for decades. It works extremely well on keeping not only mosquitoes, but chiggers, ticks, black flies. It keeps the insects from biting you, basically. It puts a shield on your, on your person that they don't like, so they stay away from you. Um, it doesn't last, but you know, even the, the most potent products will only last eight hours. So you need to really read the label to figure out what you have. It'll tell you reapply after two hours, reapply after four hours, or reapply after you know, swimming or strenuous activities. Um, it's really important that you read the label. Um, more recently, we've had some other products that have um, joined the approved list, which would be um, Picaridin. That is a product that uh, both Off and, and Cutter, the two major manufacturers, produce. Um, most of the stuff that you're seeing in that is not going to be in an aerosol can. It's going to be in a little pump can, so you actually have to pump spray it. It does not smell like DEET. There's a lot of people I talk to that say, oh, I can't stand that stuff. I don't want to use it. Um, Percaritin could be an alternative. I personally use Percaritin, um, and I've had a lot of other folks that didn't like the DEET that seemed to like that. So. Um, but there's a full list that we'll, we'll put up on the screen from the CDC that, that you can see. Um, most of them are not commercially available here, but you can buy just about anything on the internet these days. Well, Dr. Chang, we've heard about the West Nile virus, Eastern equine encephalitis. Now there's a new virus that we're hearing about, chikungunya. Let's talk about that. 
All right, so um, chikungunya virus is similar to these other viruses in that it's a virus that's transmitted by mosquitoes to humans. Um, chikungunya is a little bit different from the other ones we described because people have not only the high fever and some of those joint, uh, joint issues, but they have very severe joint pain in many, many different joints. So um, it's been talked about a lot in the press recently, and um, it's very hard to pronounce, um, but people, when, so when they see something that looks exotic uh, and they hear that's in Virginia, it gets a lot of attention. Um, the truth is that chikungunya has actually been around for many, many years. Um, it's, it's pretty uh, common in other parts of the world, such as Asia or the Middle East or Africa or in the, in the Pacific or uh, Indian Ocean Islands. Um, the thing that has been new about it is that uh, in late 2013, we saw our first case of local transmission of chikungunya virus in the Western Hemisphere. So it had previously lived in the Eastern Hemisphere, but now it's in the West. And how that's affected people who live here in Virginia is that previously we would see maybe two to three cases of chikungunya virus uh, reported in Virginia a year, and about 30 cases total in the U.S. Now, this year, we have seen six cases of chikungunya virus already in Virginia as of July 8th, according to the CDC. And you ask, why? Well, the reason is because we have a lot of Virginians who are traveling to the Caribbean, and now the virus is now um, much more prevalent in the countries around the Caribbean, and so people are coming back with chikungunya virus. Now, the truth is that um, people will want you to be very anxious about it, but right now the virus is not being transmitted locally in Virginia. They've actually traveled either to, mostly to the Caribbean or to Asia or Africa. They've come back, they've gotten these symptoms, the doctors diagnosed them, they gotten the lab test back, and it says chikungunya. Um, there's nobody that's gotten the virus again that from local transmission, meaning it's come from a mosquito that they actually uh, that bit them here in Virginia. Now, I'd like to also um, preface that by saying that uh, it's coming. So I want f folks out there to be aware that because of many more people now visiting the Caribbean and coming back with the virus, that potentially the virus will actually become a local uh, virus. So this virus is transmitted by the Asian tiger mosquito, which is in the Caribbean and other parts of the world. But uh, as luck would have it, the Asian tiger mosquito is here in Virginia, and there's a lot of them here in the Tidewater region. What it would take for this virus to be transmitted here in the U.S. is just one person to come back from the Caribbean or somewhere else in the world who has chikungunya virus in their blood. A mosquito comes and, and bites them and actually um, uh, takes a little bit of blood from, let's say, me, uh, and then they actually flies over to George and actually uh, bites George, and there you have transmission. So it's not a long, you know, it's not a far step to think that potentially this could happen even at the end of this uh, mosquito season, or if not next year. Well, what advice would you have for people who are actually going to travel to the Caribbean? Yeah, so the best advice is, so you don't ruin your vacation there, is for you to be very aware of your surroundings when you get out there. So, for example, um, you don't want mosquitoes to rule uh, your to ruin your vacation. So you want to make sure that you turn on the AC if it's available. Make sure your door or your screens on your door and your windows are tight so you don't have mosquitoes flying in. I know George had mentioned this that uh, it's the same kind of messages, right? We want to wear uh, the right kind of clothing. So if possible, wear long sleeve shirts and and long 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 pants so that you don't get bitten, and then also spray the same kinds of um, um, uh, materials that George had already described in terms of protecting you from mosquitoes. Now, specifically about chikungunya virus, I would recommend that you pay very close attention to your body when you come home for the, at least the, the two, first two weeks after you get back, because most people who get chikungunya will get symptoms, and most people will get symptoms within a week. So if you've come back for two weeks, you know, haven't had any symptoms of high fever 
or severe joint pain, then you pretty are pretty much in the clear. But pay attention if you have any high fevers or joint pains that start suddenly and you've had a history of going to the Caribbean, you need to go see your doctor. And tell your doctor specifically that you visited a country outside the U.S., such as the Caribbean, where chikungunya virus is currently um, um, active. But the main thing is prevention. Unfortunately, there's no uh, vaccine for chikungunya virus, and there's no treatment, so you can't give a drug for it. So the best thing, of course, is prevention. Well, George, tell us about Craney Island and the status of the mosquito control efforts there. Uh, Craney Island is, as many people know, can be a, a huge producer of mosquitoes. Um, so far this year, things have been going really well. Um, we still have several aerial larviciding treatments that we can perform this year. It's already, everything's already lined up. All we have to do is basically pick up the phone and 48 hours later, we can have an airplane treating out there if needed and we have plenty of material to go ahead and take care of that. Um, we also have, if things got out of control, if we had a lot of rain and you know, the mosquito populations got really bad, we also have the ability to have the contractor spray for adult mosquitoes. And we have one shot on the calendar this year with the Air Force um, may possibly be available in the first part of September. So things are, things are going pretty well over there right now. So if the decision is made that we will do aerial adulticiding and larviciding, we will notify the public. That's correct. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers and the City of Portsmouth both coordinate. We send out a press release. We let people know when we're doing the application, what, you know, what time of day and what kind of application it is. Um, it's really important because people get confused. When we're doing the larviciding application, that's killing the larvae. So we're actually applying um, it's BTI, basically. It's, the, it's a microbial crystal that only affects mosquitoes, and it's only applied to, to the water. So it may only be a few hundred acres. Um, beekeepers don't have to worry about it. Most citizens would never even know the plane was out there. Um, but we still like to let people know, just in case they see a plane out flying around Craney Island or out over the river, that, hey, yes, we're out here, we're doing this stuff. Um, for the adult deciding stuff, usually, I have people call in the office and let me know that we got plenty of mosquitoes out there and they're, they're very happy to hear we're sending a plane out to kill the adult mosquitoes. Um, that, they will see the plane flying over um, and we do the same thing with the joint press release. We also post the information um, for all of our activities, ground base and aerial, on the mosquito hotline, which anybody can call the hotline during hours, um, seven to four o'clock, Monday through Friday. It's 393-8666, and just ask for the mosquito hotline. Um, if you don't, that will get you the recorded message. If you want to talk to somebody in mosquito control, all you have to do is just leave us your name, address, and a phone number, and somebody will call you back. Well, tell us more about the mosquito control hotline. The hotline is, a, is an updated uh, recorded message for, for that specific day, whatever's going on that day. Um, in some cases, it might actually cover two or three days um, especially on the weekends because the staff might be coming in to spray at night, but they're not going to change the message over. So we'll set one message on Friday that says we're spraying Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, but that's, that's pretty much a recorded message. The hotline number and, and the number to reach me is the same number. It's 393-8666. Well, Dr. Chang, do you have anything else that you would like to share with the residents of Portsmouth? Well, I'd just like to thank you for inviting me to come speak about um, chikungunya virus and some of these other diseases that uh, we need to be very aware of. And we actually have a role. Each citizen has a role in being able to protect uh, our whole city from uh, these diseases being passed uh, from to, to mosquitoes and to other folks in the community. So um, um, I just encourage folks to, um, um, to come to, to uh, the local health department website uh, if you want to find out more information about chikungunya virus. And I also want to encourage the physicians out there, if you have any patients that you suspect may have any kind of arbor bile disease, so West Nile, Triple E, um, chikungunya, to please contact the health department and we can help set up uh, proper testing and actual delivery of those testing specimens to the CDC. And George, do you have anything else to add? Um, just the important number is that Mosquito hotline or the number to reach me for questions is 393-8666. 
Um, you can either ask for the hotline or if you want to talk to somebody from Mosquito Control, just say, I need to talk to somebody from Mosquito Control. We'll get your name, number, and somebody will, will call you back. Well, thank you, Dr. Chang and George Wojcik for joining us to talk about mosquito control and reminding us that prevention is the key. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for watching this edition of At Your Service. For PCTV, I'm Dana Woodson.